there's a reason why the Wrangler is the 4x4 SUV of the year. And we're gonna show you in this review some of this. Furman Jeep of Wesley Chapel has given us the 2022 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 in your bright white with the new Extreme Recon package, which will give us 35 inch 17 by 8 B lock wheels. This is the quickest, the most powerful Wrangler ever. 392 cubic inches is underneath that hood. It's going to be a little bit less power than the Challenger and the Charger, and maybe a few horsepower less than the Durango SRT 392. However, you have 75% torque off the line with the Wrangler. They had to do a four door because it's so much power underneath here, it would literally flip the car over. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and we're gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392 has its own unique styling and the best part is they take components off of other Wranglers or other Jeeps like taking it from the Gladiator. You got the free flow grill over one and a half inches raised on the hood from that Gladiator Mojave. It's all functional these hood scoops because it has to be to breathe that V8 power with a hydro guide air induction system fording through water at 32.5 inches now because this is raised up that could actually alter it as well because we got that upgraded package that is new for the year around 34 inches disconnected front anti-sway bar about two inches taller than your standard Wrangler, over 10 inches of ground clearance. The best part about this Wrangler is it's a sports car. It's an everyday use car. It's an off-roading car, everything possible, and it's still a family car, and you have towing capacity. You have a convertible option, or you could do the hard top, which we have, and it's a three-piece, which doesn't necessarily make it more quiet, because you got a huge V8 underneath here. The width at 73.8 inches. And I like how they keep the traditional seven slot grill. You're gonna get the matte black with the honeycomb. We have the trail cam that is making it more possible to do anything that you need. You got the bronze tow hooks in the front. And then you're gonna have it on that 392, the black surrounding it. And I just like how it just bulges on that hood because it really stresses performance. Rubicon badging on the side. This is what you gotta look at. Let's go down in here so you can see this upgraded Fox aluminum body two inch shocks. True lock electronically locking Dana 44 axle. The rear is a stabilizer bar, it's stiffer. It's retuned select track two. 35 inch wheels, like we were saying, because of that extreme package that we have. 17 inch, these are beadlock capable by eight. So you can do anything that you need. The disc reading behind all of them at 13.8 inches. The rear will be solid with a single piston caliper and a two piece in diameter. So the styling cues and the performance is all going to integrate to give us the classic four x four that we've been craving for so many years. Four door, like I said at the beginning, because you have to. It would be too much power, it'd just literally flip up the truck. Obviously, you'd be able to handle it, you just let off the gas. However, all white, I like what we're going with. Jeep with the bronze behind it, so it gets that nice appearance, and you got the air vent on the side. Everything's gonna be very boxy, but that's again what the traditional Jeep Wrangler is. A length at 188.4 inches, a wheelbase at 118.4 inches. What I would do personally if I bought the vehicle though, is maybe take these little plastic pieces off. They put that because of regulations, because the wheels are so big. LED tail lamps and finally quad exhaust outlets. And this is exactly what we've been wanting for our Wranglers. Something with 470 horsepower. Ring a bell, it's the SRT V8. That's what we got underneath here. You still can only tow up to 3,500 pounds. Payload is up to 1,000 pounds. So you do have the capabilities. I do like how they got the performance Jeep badging in the back and how they extend 
the reverse camera out here as well because these are huge tires. If they don't extend it out or you don't get an extension, what's gonna happen? These tires are gonna block the visibility. However, going inside to your cargo, easy to open, starts at 27.7 cubic feet. We have a 12 volt charger. There's a little bit of storage underneath the floor. The rear bench split folds at a 60-40 split. That's gonna max that cargo to 67.4 cubic feet. But like I've been saying through this whole review, SUV performance all blended in. It's gonna be hard to really compare it at the price point that you get for what you're getting here. And you know the best? is we got that V8, so we need to go inside, start it up, hear the active exhaust note as well, and we're gonna do that now. the new Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392. If you don't know these type of vehicles, would you be able to pick it out in a parking lot? I think that the distinct styling that this particular Wrangler has will definitely give you that performance blend, especially if you're looking at it from the rear with the quad exhaust tips, people are gonna think, what the heck is that? They gotta start researching it and they back that performance with a 6.4 liter V8 SRT Hemi producing 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission, achieving 13 to 17 MPGs. Jeep says a 0 to 60 is at 4.5 seconds. However, most reviewers now are all agreeing that it's under four seconds, which is insane because this is a Jeep and it's raised up higher. It's off-roading capable. We got 35 inch tires, I mean, a quarter mile is at 13 seconds flat. You really have to swallow this and digest it because it's really crazy how they engineered this car to be such a perfect four x four performer on road and off road. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited 392 as we go into the interior, go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392 without running boards, I would recommend you get it. I mean, what's a couple grand at this point? Headroom at 40.8 inches, legroom at 43.9 inches. These are bucket leather front seats with the Rubicon badging. You got the contrast stitching all in that bronze. Heated seats, they're unfortunately manual for the front. For the price point that I'm at, it's really hard to say it's okay, but you have to let it slide because again, this is an all road vehicle, meaning you're gonna take it off road as well. The dashboard is gonna be very simple and plain, just like every other Wrangler. With the bronze stitching, you got the storage pocket in the front. And I mean, I like the fact that the window is more sleek and unique styling with the Wranglers because when you're looking out of it, it just feels boxy, kind of like, I guess you could say the iconic Jeep Willy at the end of the day. Grab handle is gonna have the Wrangler for the passenger side. I like this glossy interior that is on the dash. You got the silver that's going to outline all of your air vents. We do have the 8.4 inch Uconnect 5 with navigation. It's touch screen, so we have the pinch. We have the swipe. Click into your app so you can see everything we have besides Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, streaming Bluetooth. Click on that Forward facing camera, this is your trail camera. It's trajectory. You can also clean it. You can do that for the back. That way you have trajectory. You can see the tow line. Perfect, making it easy for movability. This vehicle does sit up higher at the end of the day. Click into the off road page. This is really intuitive here because you have your drivetrain information, you got your gauges, your pinch and roll, and that trail cam yet again. If you don't want to do it here, you can do it through the gauge cluster. It's not only an array of information, you do have that off roading page. So it does help with that. The steering wheel, it's leather wrap, heated, multi function. You got the cross stitch with the bronze, paddle shifters. This is 
definitely going to be a delight. 470 horsepower. Sorry that I have to keep saying it, but it's how many more years we're going to get this Hemi engine. Dual climate control settings, plenty of USB, 12 volt, you got your locking front and rear differential, you have more auxiliary, so you can customize this vehicle a little bit more, and you have your off-roading and your sway bar disconnect. The gear lever, I do like that we have the old Willys Jeep right there on the top, we got the leather and that bronze stitch work again. You have your transfer case with the leather wrap as well, cup holders, 16.9 ounce, I would say maybe a 20 ounce max, you got an area for your key fob, bronze stitch work yet again on the brake handle. Open up for here, it's the first tier, it's going to be smaller, second tier, going to be deeper with another USB, so you are taken care of with storage capacity here. Elbows, it's going to be more sport derived, you're going to expect that with 470 pound feet of torque. Door panel, harder materials, you're going to expect this as well because you can take these off. You got the bronze stitching and you got plenty of storage. I mean, you can fit whatever you like. Obviously, the more you fit in there, it's going to stretch it out in the long term. So don't go too crazy, but I would say you can still fit five to seven 16.9 ounce water bottles. We do have the three piece Freedom hard top. We also have a soft top availability with it as well. So it's a convertible and that's something that I really like. Let's see how I look in the back. For the back seat, I'm at 40.3 inches of headroom, 38.2 inches of legroom. I can fit fine at six foot three. The center has a lot going on, and what I mean by that is charging ports, four total USB. You have a home plug, you got your air vents, and you got storage behind both of the front seats. The floor isn't necessarily completely flat because you got another tray there as well, but the good thing about this is the storage capacity that you have. You can still fit something there because when I sit in the center, I don't want to hold my drink in between my legs. Door panel, harder materials. Again, you're going to expect that same thing and the elbows are going to be pretty firm on both sides except for here. You sit pretty much more inwards so that way the seats are not necessarily bulged outwards in the width of the vehicle. So it might be a little bit tight, Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom, absolutely no problem. Legroom, I'm grazing the back of both of the front seats in the position that I'd be sitting. I am going to be sharing feet, shoulder, butt space, because like I was saying, the width of these seats are actually pushed inwards more, and I'm assuming they do this purposely because you're gonna be taking those doors off, but I mean, I wouldn't do it on a trail. Maybe I would if you're gonna go lower speeds, but you could probably go about 20, 30 minutes without having too many issues sitting in the center. The nice thing about the Wrangler is you can fold these seats down completely and you would get nearly 65 cubic feet of storage, which is awesome. And if you're just putting two adults my size and dimensions back here, you're not gonna have too many issues either. Headroom is going to be great, even when you take the top off, because these speakers that's up here, they're in front, so it blocks the wind from hitting my head. Taking the 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392 out for our test run with the Extreme Recon package, which gives us those upgraded 35 inch tires, 17 by eight inches beadlock capable, so you can do your rock crawling at the end of the day. We are lifted up higher than the normal Wrangler, about an inch and a half more, fording through water, 35 inches nearly. I mean, this thing is insane for what you're getting. 470 over 470. So horsepower and torque meet with this 6.4 liter SRT V8 Hemi. So I do like what we're working with to, I mean, start right off the top. There's not a lot of aerodynamics. So with the engineering being that you can get under four seconds, zero to 60, that's something to think about. So we're gonna start off without the active exhaust, so that way we can still kind of hear the exhaust, but not to full potential. Here we go. The nice thing about this exhaust is when you push it on a higher load, it will activate the active exhaust. So that's really what I was trying to show you. So that way it helps with the pressure in the vehicle so it can breathe better because this is a performance vehicle at the end of the day. So getting up the gear, you're gonna pass every single person because even Jeep is saying 4.5 seconds. But like I said through the exterior review, most reviewers are all saying that you can get it in the three second margin. So that's under four seconds. Brakes, 
this is going to be upgraded braking as well it's not going to be performance like a race car or a sports car but you still have the capabilities and these are oversized tires too checking the turn radius at more or less a stop point again we don't have the active exhaust note on yet but we're going to try to set it straight and give her a go You know, normally we complain about Wranglers in the interior noise, but you don't really hear that noise as much when you have the active exhaust note on. When you don't, you're gonna hear it. So whenever you're giving it some gas and flooring it, you heard that exhaust note. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to activate it. So that way it actually helps filter out the road noise significantly. I would say like almost 50%. So I do like that because you're also getting the vehicle to breathe better. You're not going to experience this with any other vehicle, even if you do your own aftermarket type of things. This is factory spec to get everything you're getting in that deep exhaust note. I mean, listen to it. It's a symphony. I mean, this will literally intoxicate you so you want to hear more. I mean, it is so deep. I like it. Visibility, you can see good. Obviously, the steering is going to be Jeep oriented, so it's going to have some play and it might move and sway as you're driving, but that's normal because this is an off roading vehicle at the end of the day. We do have blind spot monitoring. I wish that the side view mirrors were a little bit bigger though because they're a little small. Stop in the middle of the road here. Here we go. It definitely will always put a smile on your face. The paddle shifters, I wish were a little bit bigger because like when you get into a TRX or a Hellcat Red Eye, it's going to be massive. And I mean, you're expecting that with this engine that's going to bring me to the three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that, I'd be buying this vehicle. Obviously, everyone knows through this whole review, I'm a fanatic about performance and they did an excellent job engineering it. This is a box. Just keep this in mind and try to digest it. It's a box on wheels. Zero to 60 in the three second margin. That is insane for a vehicle MSRP with that new extreme recon package at about $82,000, dollars Where are you gonna get that? The second thing that I like about the vehicle is I'm a huge fan of convertibles and a practical vehicle. Obviously, the gas consumption is not practical, so please don't be like, oh, well, you get no gas. I get it. But if I was looking for a convertible vehicle, a sports car, an all-in-one vehicle to even go off-roading, a convertible, fit the whole family, fit cargo, you can even tow? I mean, you cannot get that with any sports car at all. Obviously, you can get some of the attributes, but you're not going to be able to take it off-roading. And the power that you get with this, it's not going to be comparable to anything that's on the road, especially for the price point. The last thing I like... You heard it. It's a symphony every time you push it. You're gonna wanna hear it at two, two and a half RPMs, but it really starts livening up around two and a half to three, three and a half max, and then it's just that full potential that's just breathing beautifully and giving you raw performance. Three things that I dislike has to go with that price point. The MSRP is in the 80 grand price. I would have liked to see maybe a different dash design, maybe power adjustments for the seats, maybe a few more amenities on the door panel. I get it. We're going to probably remove them most of the time, especially if you live in Florida. I would say nine out of 10 days, you're going to be removing it, but still give us a little bit more. The second thing that I dislike has to go to the towing. Obviously, probably most of the buyers will not tow. I actually personally tow because I had a boat. So when I bought my SUV, I specifically bought it because at the time I owned a restaurant and a boat. And I said, I have to be able to get stock if need be. And I need to be able to tow at least 5,000 pounds. And I have performance, but I don't have the towing capabilities. The last thing, we gotta hear some exhaust. The last thing that I dislike 
With the recon package, I like that we're getting the 35 inch wheel upgrade and I like that we got the beadlock capable 17 and a half wheels. And I think they're doing a great job here so you can see the brakes. This is harder braking. And when you're comparing it against the Ford Bronco, because that's who competes really against this, this thing will outperform it like crazy. It brings the heat. However, they don't really offer something like the Sasquatch package in the sense that it kind of makes it a little bit more I guess playful it's more professional with performance and here it is it's hard to nitpick about something you dislike with a 470 horsepower 470 pound-feet of torque 0 to 60 4.5 to low three seconds and yes, the MSRP really starts around $77, maybe $50. But when you get the recon package and you start adding a few things, it's going to be well over $82,000 to $83,000. As for the dynamics, obviously you're not going to go crazy with cornering, especially with these type of tires. But you can take it off-roading and rock crawling because this is what this is known for. Like I was saying at the beginning, there's a reason why this is the number or the best. 4x4 SUV almost every single year, it's because they think about taking it off-roading. They think about the capabilities of actually using it every terrain. And if you need even more than that, I mean, you can go to the Mojave and get desert rated. I like to thank Furman Jeep of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2022 Jeep Gladiator Unlimited Rubicon 392 for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click this next video here, the subscribe button, check out the details, merchandise, website, everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.